Exactly. And it's Tuesday, which means it's time for the Improv Leadership Show with your host, Ted Schneider, every Tuesday from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. on 98.3 FM, The Life. That's right. Coming to you live from our new studio on uh, Hawthorne. Again, 98.3, The Life. Improv Leadership. Always start the show out with a uh, shout out to our local loyal listeners. Of course, uh, Alec, uh, my older son. Thank you very, very much for listening. Zach, my younger son. Thank you for listening. Uh, we have a group of folks from Central Baptist Village, Scott, Carol, Anita, Lorraine, Tim, Fun Milayo, as well as St. Louis Sioux. Of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about the Luther Burbank group. Uh, we have Kathleen, Randy, Jim, Debbie, Debbie, and that's two different people, uh, as well as John uh, again. And uh, Patrick, we thank you all for listening. A uh, long shout out to um, Andres Sanchez all the way back in um, Costa Rica. Uh, been a long time since we've talked. We will talk soon. Uh, Maria, all the way from uh, the D.C. area. And, of course, special shout out to uh, Denise, uh, my girlfriend, who is um, out of town. And I hope to see her in a couple of days. Anyway, Improv Leadership with your host, Ted Schneider, every Tuesday from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. on 98.3 The Life. And we're going to start the whole show today with a couple of things. One, um, you know, personal growth. I think a lot of people uh, look at personal growth and sometimes think, well, you know what? You know, how do I... Um, you use all the advice out there to really become a better person. I really become uh, more in tune with myself, develop, uh, and really it's a self-motivation thing. So, you know, there's a lot of advice out there and really we're constantly bombarded with messages, you know, that tell us we'll do this and do that. You want to be better, faster, healthier, uh, smarter, richer, stronger, busier. Well, there's so much to choose from. What do you do and how do you do it? Well, long story short, our human condition desires change and growth. Think about it. Change and growth is part of the, the human experience. And if you think about it even more, it's our efforts have to begin internally. You know, we have to really change it or change um, the situation, which is you or the situation. So it's hard to figure out where to start. So this is 10 ideas to support your personal growth journey. Uh, comes to us from a, um, a website. Uh, um, actually, it's Aleka uh, Hagen is the uh, author. And really, if you think about it, Seeking out self-improvement doesn't always mean that you're unhappy. It just means you want to get better, right? It's called personal growth for a reason. And if we don't grow, it's almost like a movie. Ever watch a movie and you think, wow, that character really grew. Started off in a certain position, a certain spot in life, a certain uh, situation, and they grew over the course of a movie. Now, that happens. That's a good thing because then you're saying, okay, I, I can see character growth. You know, this character changed throughout the you know hour and a half, two-hour movie as an example. Well, here's uh, some ideas again to support your personal growth journey. Number one, prioritize you. You know, the reality is, is that true personal growth and development comes from looking inward, as I mentioned at the beginning. You really have to think, okay, it's not like, how is this person going to make me feel? And how's my environment, my job, and my boss, and my girlfriend, my boyfriend, my mom, my dad, my sister? No, it has to come from within. Personal growth and development is just that. It's personal between you and yourself. As I always talk about, I don't compete against anybody but myself. I don't compare myself to anybody but myself. What am I doing? How well am I doing? How much can I do? Uh, et cetera. In terms of steps, in terms of um, articles, whatever it may be, whatever my goal is, I compare it uh, to myself. So one, prioritize you. It's not selfish. It's really just a focus. If it's personal growth, well, then it's personal, right? I mean, number two uh, beware that really you want a holistic approach, which means it recognizes all areas of development. In other words, you're going to say, okay, there's a physical issue, uh, emotional aspect, intellectual, uh, social, environmental, financial, occupational, and spiritual. That's right. Eight dimensions. If you want to think about taking a holistic approach, it's not just, I'm going to sleep, I'm going to eat. I'm going to have someone that's going to mentor me. It's really all eight of those. So again, physical, emotional, intellectual, social, environmental, financial, occupational, spiritual. All those ingredients put together should help you along your personal growth journey. The author goes on again to say, again, this is 10 ideas to support your personal growth strategy and journey. Number one, limit social comparison. We do so much today about, you know, fear of missing out and I'm going to compare myself to somebody else. Why? As I just mentioned, why would you compare yourself to anybody else? Why would you be concerned that he does this, she does that, he's gone there, she's, who cares, All right? If you limit 
social comparison. As you know, uh, Theodore Roosevelt once said, quote, comparison is the thief of joy. It is. If you're going to constantly compare yourself to somebody else, well, you're always going to be ca- trying to catch up. He makes more money. She does this. She went there. He, he drives this kind of car, whatever it may be. You're never going to be happy and you're never going to be able to catch up. So don't compare. It's yourself. Compete against yourself, no matter what it is. Exercise, sleep, financial, uh, relationship-wise, compete against yourself. Again, you want a, a, a personal growth journey? Well, guess what? Build healthy habits uh, consistently. One, you know, commit to doing one activity every day, even if it's just five minutes. That'll bring you closer to your goals and the person you want to be. Having goals and something to work towards helps to maintain our drive and gives us a sense of satisfaction. And I think a lot of times, even at work, you know, if you try to do too much, you know, people are like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. I was multitasking. No, you didn't hear me because you were doing something else. It's like your kids or if you're in front of your significant other, if you're not paying attention, all right, that's a healthy habit. Pay attention. Be present. Well, the same thing with yourself. If you're going to commit to something, well, do it every day. Now, if it's an exercise thing, okay, so you're supposed to like wait one day for this, uh, wait a second day for that. Like you may do arms one day. I know Zach's always doing that. He's always like, well, I did arms today, I did legs today. I did. I think he does butt exercises too. I'm not sure. Uh, that's another uh, topic. But the point is, focus on one activity, even if it's just five minutes. You know, a lot of times, some of the self-help people tell you, read 10 pages of a book a day. Read 10 pages of a book a day. And you're going to make progress versus, oh, I got to sit down and read a book. It's 350 pages. Well, you're never going to get that. You're never going to hit that goal. So self-improvement, one of the things they tell you is read more, no matter what it is. Now, if you're reading comic books, I guess there's some value there, but really read a good newspaper, read a good uh, book, fiction, nonfiction, whatever it may be. Or you have a blog you, uh, you listen to. Um, a lot of people do books on tape or listen to podcasts today. So either way, You want to make sure that you're doing one thing at a time that can bring you closer to your goals. Um, Also, build the team to support the dream. Build the team to support the dream. Now, think about it. If you've got people on your side, you've got maybe a mentor, you've got someone that can motivate you, someone you can, um, well, again, usually as a significant other, let's say, or a good friend. If that good friend can help keep you on track and also be honest with you, here's what I want to achieve. Here's some of the personal growth I want to do this year. It's beyond what we talked about a couple weeks ago in terms of the, uh, a New Year's resolution. This is personal growth. This is saying, I want to be different this year. Well, if you have people to support you, people to keep you honest, people that give you more of a, uh, like a compass and say, hey, you know, you're veering a little off there. If you want to go north, you're a little east right now. That's what you need. Not yes people. People that are just going to say, yo, yeah, you look great, but I haven't lost any weight. Yeah, but you look great. If you're trying to do something from a personal growth standpoint, you want people that are going to be honest with you, give you feedback. That was good. This wasn't good. Like if you want to start writing as an example, uh, you want to you know, uh, publish a book or whatever it may be, you want someone that's going to give you honest feedback. If everything you write, they're just, oh, that's so good. That's great. Maybe, just maybe, you want to expand your um, audience in terms of getting feedback. Again, this is 10 Let's see here. What's it say? 10 ideas to support your personal growth journey. This is 98.3 FM to life coming to you live from the uh, new studio on Hawthorne. Again, this is Improv Leadership with your host, Ted Schneider, every Tuesday from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. on 98.3 The Life. And we're talking again about personal growth. Well, one, embrace uh, the discomfort. You know, being comfortable doesn't help us develop. Anything you do over time is going to require uh, that you be a little uncomfortable. You're pushing the envelope. You're getting out of your comfort zone. You're doing things you don't normally do. And guess what? As a result, you know, if you've always done something, if it's exercise or whatever it may be, you, I mean, I use that as a, as a quick example. It's just too easy. You got to push yourself out a little bit and embrace the discomfort. Any kind of change, any kind of personal growth is going to mean you have to stretch yourself a little. You have to go beyond what you've done in the past. Something different. Be it learn a language, learn how to play a guitar. I've I've tried several times and I haven't put a lot of effort into it. I must admit. One, I think, even though my hands are bigger than most people, I still can't get around that. You know, the neck of the uh, uh, guitar, and I always end up hitting like two or three uh, strings at a time, and it just boop, 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 it sounds pretty bad. Long story short, I haven't put the effort. 
anything you want to do, you have to put some time and effort in. You're not going to get results magically. You know, magic doesn't, uh, there's magic all around us. I agree. But in terms of personal growth, probably no magic. Um, so again, embrace the discomfort. No matter what you do new and what you set out to do that's different, it's going to feel a little uncomfortable. Like a relationship, like playing an instrument, learning how to uh, 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 speak a, le- a new language. I took two years of German in high school and two years of uh, Spanish in uh, college. Trust me, you want to feel uncomfortable? Be in a class uh, with some kids that spoke Spanish and you're, you know, necesito comprar unos libros. Yeah, okay, yeah. That's all I remember, two years of college. I need to buy some books. Anyway, embrace discomfort. It's not going to be easy, but growth and change really seldom is. Uh, celebrate your progress. If you're making progress, if you're really um, small successes, why not celebrate it? If you don't, you're not going to really see. Just, again, the simplest thing is weight. If you get on the scale and you see, hey, I lost two pounds, great. Celebrate it. I wouldn't go eat chocolate and candy and ice cream and uh, uh, you know a, a pie right away just because you're down two pounds. But the point is, celebrate your progress. You know, reinforce that you're making progress, whatever your goal is, whatever your personal growth um, uh, goal is. A, a last thing here, or a la- second last thing, take it slow. If you're doing something new and you're doing something you haven't done in the past, well, guess what? Take it slow at first. You know, anything new, anything different, again, that whole discomfort thing, well, guess what? Not only <clears throat> are you in a situation where it's something I have never done before, I'm trying to grow, not just stay the same. All right. I don't, you know, the whole body in motion tends to stay in motion inertia uh, description. I want to break fr- free of that uh, atmosphere, that, uh, that gravity. Well, bottom line is take it slow. But once you start making progress, you can pick up the pace. There's no right or wrong here. Whatever you set for personal growth is what you should do. And lastly, uh, again, notice your allies. You know, when you commit to personal growth, some people may not support you or agree with your choices. Well, bottom line is, See who's on your side. Perfect example. When I lost my job back in 2001, I quickly found all the people that were my real supporters and allies, people that helped me find a new job, people that were giving me leads. You know, some people I called up and was like, oh, that's too bad. That's it. Okay. I wasn't looking for a handout. I wasn't looking for money, but a little support goes a long way and you tr- you really find out who your true friends are. In, in tragedy or in situations that are, um, you know, trying, like I said, you lose your job, illness, uh, death in the family, whatever it may be, you really find out who are, are your true friends. So bottom line is this author, again, this is uh, 10, uh, ideas to support your personal growth journey. Uh, Ikua Hagen wrote the article. She says, I wholeheartedly believe we can all show ourselves a little more compassion and gra- grace on our journeys. But instead of drowning all the things you're told you should do and could be doing, her advice is pause and reflect. Take inventory of the things you're already doing right. You know, I think a lot of times we get so hung up on, well, this is what I'm supposed to do. Here's what's normal. Here's what's, we live in a world today. I'm not convinced anything is normal. I'm not convinced um, uh, that bottom line is we're all different. And if you look at the differences, that makes us unique. And those uniqueness, traits, skills, is what makes it life, which makes us all, you know, part of this uh, this community called Earth. Anyway, bottom line is personal growth, uh, some ideas. This is uh, 98.3 FM, The Life, coming live again from the new studio on Hawthorne and uh, Round Lake Beach. And um, this is Improv Leadership with your host, Ted Schneider, every Tuesday, as I mentioned, from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m., on 98.3, The Life. Quick uh, station ID, just in case. You're like, what was the station again? What? Exactly. 98.3 of um, The Life. Well, you know, we're also going to talk, again, the whole night on, uh, not the whole night, but just the hour I've got, about personal development, self-help. Well, this is an article by, let's see here, um, Anu Abdu. Hive. Um, it's actually hive.com, but a new abu. Anyway, uh, 10 personal development goals to set yourself and how to achieve them. This is kind of simple things. And some of the stuff I've already talked about. Number one, 
read something every day. Think about the value of absorbing information. You know, I've been doing the radio now for, I think, 12, 13 years. And the number of articles and research and things that I've come across, it's incredible. And there's, again, all this useless information in my head. And some I've kind of spilled out over the years. But the point is, read something. You'll grow every day, even if it's just a two-minute article online or a single page in a fiction novel. This little habit will change your life. Too many people today don't read. They want to be entertained. They want to watch something. Use your brain a little bit. And again, a personal development goal is read something every day. Uh, Another thing is improve your self-care. Think about it. If you're going to do something new, you're going to try to better yourself. Well, why not some, uh, you know, undertake some self-care practices like, well, adequate sleep. There you go. Nutritious food, regular exercise. You know, it's it's the three wise men I always talk about. Sleep, exercise, and diet. If you have a balance of those three things, you're getting regular sleep, you eat right, and you don't have to eat. um, A lot of people go, well, you know, a good diet costs so much. Not really. It doesn't cost a lot, but you want to stay away from a lot of the fast food, obviously. You know, having a burger and having a, you know, something deep fried every day is probably not the best thing. Or a lot of sweets. The point is, why not uh, embrace, as I call it, the three wise men or the three women, uh, three wise women. One, it's exercise, it's diet, and it's also um, sleep. Those three things. So again, improve your self-care. If you're physically and mentally able to you know, grow and change and absorb, great. It's like being in school. If you get up and don't eat a good breakfast and you go to school and you didn't sleep, you're going to be dragging you behind by the time you get there. You're not going to be able to perform. Same thing at work. If you're hungover, if you haven't slept, if you haven't eaten, um, guess what? You probably are not the best employee at that point. So a little self-care goes a long way. Uh, Again, we're talking about 10 great personal development ideas to set for yourself and how to achieve them. Develop your relationship skills. It's another powerful personal development goal. Ask yourself how effectively you interact with others and be honest about the answers. Think about that. Develop your relationship uh, skills. No matter what we do in life, be it personal, family, work, relationships are the key, I think, and I've talked about this for a, for a couple of years now, are the key to what we have. If you cannot develop a good relationship, you're not going to be successful at work. Um, you're not going to be able to interact. You're not going to be able to get people to you know, motivate them, get them to do what you want, or work as a team. You know, poor relationship skills just are not going to keep get you too far in life. And again, that goes for personal, it goes for family, and that goes for also, of course, work. So again, develop your relationship skills if uh, you're looking to develop yourself personally. Uh, some other ideas, um, again, grow your network. We talked about that before. You want people that know you, that support you, that um, really can be on your side, but also give you good feedback. Lose your job, as I mentioned before, and see how well you did network-wise. Lose your job and then go, hmm, did he have two kids? When was the last time I talked to her? When was the last time I reached out to him? If you're truly not networking, again, lose your job and see you know, who's on your side, who's going to be supporting, who's going to give you ideas. Networking is really you know, one of the keys to life, one of the um, threads that run through our, um, our journey in terms of interaction, really having interactions with people where you meet them for breakfast, you hang out, you go to parties, you do different things physically, regardless of the time of year, where you live, et cetera. So you want to build your network because one, you want people that you can rely on, but also people that can tell um, your story for others. So just keep that in mind. Um, Improve your self-awareness and emotional intelligence. Yeah, if you're on a uh, personal development quest, emotions are going to happen. So allow yourself to experience them, but not allow them to control the rest of your experiences. So increase your self-awareness and emotional intelligence. Well, you know, a lot of times practicing mindfulness or meditation are great options. But for some people, it might be, you know, tough, especially if you're just going to start this off. It's something easy, you're a beginner. Gain a new perspective of how you feel by journaling, you know, some type of uh, diary or journal. 
write about experiences and reflect on them and can help identify patterns and triggers in our thoughts and emotions. And if you have got an iPhone, as an example, I think the latest, one of the latest releases, 17 point something, there's actually a journal app. It'll prompt you based on what you ask it to do and give you different things. So you can talk about a meal you just had at a restaurant. You can talk about you experience, you went out with somebody, um, whatever it may be, but you can set it to remind you at a certain time, at certain days, to journal what you've experienced. And if you can do that every couple of days, not only will you capture what you're thinking, but you won't lose what occurred that day or that week. Again, there's a journal app on the iPhone, at least. I'm, I'm sure that Android has something very similar. It'll prompt you based on what you ask it to do at eight o'clock on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And you can ignore it, but it's a nice prompt to say, you know what? I watched a good movie. I had a good meal somewhere. I did something at work that was interesting. It, it's only for you. Um, it only stays on your phone. And But it's a neat way of reflecting what occurred. Because a lot of times, especially if you're busy and, or lead a busy life, you're going to miss some of the things that you've done that week. So there's a good example where a journal app prompts you at a certain time, certain day, however you set it, to capture some of the things you've done and reflect. Almost like I always talk about, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, and you know, lay down in bed, I'm, I'm thinking of different things, a little meditation, prayer, that kind of thing. But also I reflect back on what went well. What went well today? What really did I um, excel at? I'm proud of. I was, it was an accomplishment, achievement. And, you know, kind of like just check off, okay, I did this, I did this, so many miles, this at work, blah, blah, blah. You talk to him, talk to her. And it's a nice way of kind of recapping the day. Well, a journal is the same thing, and it's permanent or as permanent as permanent can be, and you can reflect back and then learn from those um, uh, journal entries. So again, again, uh, journaling. Um, also, explore a professional or creative skill. You know, a lot of times people say, well, okay, maybe some kind of business thing like data analysis or some strategy, customer service, finance, accounting, or a hobby. Again, it can be anything, photography, uh, learn uh, um, um, to play an instrument. And maybe you want to start writing something, you want to do poetry, whatever it may be explore some kind of professional or creative or both. Why not make it a professional creative thing? You can use it at work and use it on your personal time. If you want to push yourself a little bit and grow, and let's be honest, at a certain age, you know, you're going to stop maybe growing in terms of, you know, where your life is going in terms of, let's say you've been married for 30 years or 40 years, nothing wrong with that. That's, that's commendable. If that's actually what you've achieved. The point is, branch out and what else can I do with my life, with myself, with my partner, uh, with my family, with my friends. And at that point, think about something creative or professional. If you're not working anymore, but you want to give back, you want to go and volunteer someplace, personal growth through a professional organization by volunteering, incredible. Or apply some of your creativity. Again, it could be music. It could be you know, baking. It can be, um, writing. There's a ton of things. You could be, um, you know, making uh, quilts, whatever it may be, but you want to try to explore something new and different, either professionally or a uh, creative skill. <clears throat> Again, they talk about embrace mindfulness and, and cultivate gratitude. Think about it. You know, mindfulness is a practice of being fully engaged uh, with your thoughts, emotions, and surroundings. A great tool to really center yourself. Meditation, yoga, uh, intentional breaks with observations of your environment all give you some mindfulness practice. And I did that last summer. Um, Rosemont has the uh, yoga in the park. I think it was on Sundays at 10 o'clock. And it was pretty warm out there. And they got a green um, artificial turf uh, field. And boy, oh boy. Uh, not only uh, some of these people, most of them were women. Um, a few guys out there. But they're, let's say, 75% women and 25% guys. I couldn't believe how flexible these people were, the poses they could hold and get themselves into watching the instructor on the main stage. Uh, the point is really good for your body to um, get out of the normal uh, movement. You know, we talk about, you know, a lot of experts say that if you do the same thing all the time, your body gets used to it. Muscle memory, just like batting. Good news is if you're, if you're playing baseball as an example and you're swinging the bat the right way, your body will remember that's the right way to swing the bat. Okay. And also remember the wrong way, so you want to get good habits. The point is, though, 
if you do something different, use muscles you don't normally use, like let's say you're out there shoveling snow and it's thick and heavy. There's probably nothing else you do on a normal basis, any other time of the year or time of the day that use the same motion, muscles, et cetera. You're definitely going to feel it. You're definitely going to say, wow, I haven't used those muscles in a long time. Well, you have, but not in that method. So the point is um, really, you know, get out of this, uh, the, the mold you're in and do something different physically or mentally, you know, creatively. Why not use uh, some of that um, energy? Uh, to really uh, help you on your personal growth path. Again, mindfulness and cultivate gratitude. You know, show appreciation, say thank you, acknowledge effort, uh, compliment genuinely. You know, even in work as an example, the best thing I can think of at work is where give credit where credit's due. You know, someone, uh, like in my case, I was on a call last, was it, well, last Friday, you know, Thursday, whatever day it was, the day's mix working from home. We're on a call from 1130 in the morning till 530 at night to fix one issue. The guy that fixed it, you bet I said thank you. I mean, it was six hours to try to fix one issue. And this guy went, you know, I think we could do. Sure enough. Point is, definitely thank the guy. Uh, sent him some um, uh, through the system and copied his boss and some of his peers because I appreciated it. I genuinely appreciated, one, getting off the call after six hours, but his efforts, his insight definitely um, was useful. So bottom line is, you know, you want to reflect on what's working on these personal growth journeys. You want to reflect on what's not working, you know, uh, and where I should put more time, less time. It's almost like, you know, Tiger Woods with his short game and his long game. At one point, I guess he was pretty good uh, with the long game and not so good in the short game. So, you know, most people would say as an example, I need to fix, you know, what I'm doing poorly. But if you think about it, if you do even better that what you do well, well, there's less that you don't do well. So as the, as the golf example, he had a good long game, but a poor uh, short game. Well, the better he got at the long game, there wasn't too much of a short game. Other people take the other approach. I'm strong here. I'm going to back off. I'm weak here. I'm going to focus. Bottom line is whatever works for you, do it. Whatever you think uh, you need to do uh, for consistency, uh, for improvement, as well as just in general uh, to, uh, again, grow as an individual. And I think the whole message tonight about personal growth is wherever you are, put some goals out there. And it's, again, more than just New Year's resolutions, okay? I want to stop smoking. I want to lose five pounds. That's not really personal growth. Those are goals, objectives. That's great. But as an individual, how are you going to change? You know, a lot of times people have anger management issues. Maybe I want to focus more on, you know, relaxing more when I'm driving or whatever triggers are out there that, you know, set me off. Bottom line is personal growth. We're going to continue to talk. At this point, though, uh, this is 98.3 FM, The Life, coming live from the new station on uh, Hawthorne Drive in Round Lake Beach. And uh, we're going to take a little break here. This is Improper Leadership with your host, Ted Schneider, every Tuesday from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m., as I mentioned, on 98.3 FM. Take a listen, uh, some public service announcements, and we'll be back in a few minutes.
Exactly. And this is Improv Leadership with your host, Ted Schneider, as I mentioned, every Tuesday from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Central on 98.3 FM, The Life. Again, we were talking about uh, personal growth. We're also talking about uh, some self-improvement. And just a quick shout out, uh, the new studio is incredible. And uh, the efforts of a lot of individuals um, made it happen, as well as the community. Keep in mind, the radio station, 98.3 FM, The Life is here for Lake County in the world, actually. Um, we appreciate everyone's efforts, Listen, people that listen in, as well as, again, those individuals that really made this uh, happen. So, again, a shout-out to all those folks, uh, time, effort, money, uh, to make uh, the studio incredible, to say the least. If you're not familiar right now, you can go to WRLR.FM, or you can go to 983thelife.com soon. That's the uh, new website. Either way, uh, take a listen. Anyway, sorry about that. So we're going to talk about uh, 42 practical ways to start working on self-improvement. There's a lot of little things you can do. Again, a lot of times uh, people go, you know what? Where do I start? I've got all this I want to get done. It's like it's like writing a book, okay? You don't just sit down and knock out 300 pages. It's a project at work. It's not that simple where all of a sudden you can just, you know, go from zero to 60 in a second. Uh, the best approach is just take it little by little, all right? Take a huge task and chop it up into pieces, just like a recipe, right? You don't just throw everything in and there it is. You have to add ingredients. You have to build on it, okay? Uh, the same thing with building a building. Build a house uh, like um, uh, Debbie did, um, and she's in the process right now. Looks great, by the way, too, Debbie. Uh, the point is it takes time. They do this. Then you do that. You pour the, you dig the hole. You pour the foundation, um, you do this, you know, the, whatever it is, the drywall, you get the inspector out there. I hope she got the inspector out there. Either way, the point is building a home is a perfect example. It just doesn't go up in one day. You dig the hole, you do the foundation, you do the studs where the electric, blah, 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 plumbing, blah, 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 roof. Blah, blah. No, of course not. But just like a goal uh, in personal growth, you start with nothing and you do a little by it, a little at a time and you, it builds upon each other. So just keep that in mind. Anyway, lifehack.org. This is um, uh, Celestine Chow, 42 Practical Ways uh, to Start Working on Self-Improvement. And it's never too late. Look at some famous people that didn't start their careers through their 50s and 60s, as an example, or even maybe a little younger. But the point is, I really don't like people when they go, oh, well, you know, you got to do it in your 20s. Sure, maybe you have children. If you're in your 60s, you're probably not going to have kids, as an example, if you're a woman. There are some restrictions in life, but in general, it's never too late to start. And that means never too uh, late to start in terms of a relationship, in terms of personal growth, in terms of a new career, in terms of a second career, in terms of whatever you're trying to do. And if it's something physical, like stop smoking, exercising, eat right, or it's a creative skill, or it's something you know that you want to learn to do as in like at carpentry or whatever, as an example, or be a better plumber. Either way, 42 practical ways to start working on self-improvement. Number one, guess what? Read every day. Won't be the dead horse, but the same thing. Again, read every day. Learn a new language. Great idea. It'll also help your brain. If you think about it, you know, I've heard a lot about Alzheimer's and, and, and dementia and really helping people with the brain. If you're doing something very similar, you're not creating new pathways, but learning a language, uh, a new language, um, uh, playing a, a musical instrument, all that adds to new pathways because you're actually building new things in your brain, not just, well, I know how to do this. I know how to do that. My brain's going to walk in through. Of course not. Okay. So anyway, the point is learn a new language, pick up a new hobby, learn how to play a, a musical instrument, take up a new course. Okay. Um, seminars, workshops. There's a ton of things. The library um, uh, gives you different things available for, to the public. Of course, a lot of online stuff today since COVID. Uh, so either way, pick up a course, learn something new that you didn't take in school, uh, create an inspirational room. Uh, what they're saying here is, you know, if you're living uh, in an inspirational environment, you're going to be inspired every day. So if there's a room in your house that you can put aside and actually make your inspiration room, why not? Okay. And you go in there and maybe it's posters, maybe it's lighting, maybe it's how you painted it, whatever it may be. If you create an environment that's conducive to learning and you're happy, well, then you'll probably do better. Uh, overcome your fears. You know, we have a lot of fears, 
And I think a lot of times the media, and I won't go into it, but the media keeps us in fear to buy things or um, to, you know, um, watch the news or whatever it may be. But a lot of times there's like people have a fear of public speaking. When I was in grammar school or, you know, younger, I would, or in high school, I wouldn't have spoke in front of a group of people today. Give me a microphone. I mean, I've done live auctioneer, I've done, you know, live auctioneer duties. I've done MC jobs. Uh, of course I was in, in theater in college. Um, and, and just done a bunch of things. Uh, some I've been stand up a couple of times, improv. The point is, there's personal growth. You know, if you look at what I was in my uh, late teens, I guess, or early, early to mid late teens, a totally different person than I am today, because I, I changed, I grew. Okay. Um, anyway, the point is, overcome your fears. You know, a lot of times, you know, fears keep us stagnant. Fears keep us, you know, just not moving. And I don't care what it is, okay? Um, you know, if if it's you have a fear, overcome it if you can, uh, to to grow and to move on and to and just do more than you did in the past. Wake up early. Waking up early has been acknowledged by many to improve your productivity and your quality of life. Well, if that's the case, I'm going to live to be about 150 because I get up every day early, between four and 4:30. If I wake up and it's a little after four. I'm not going to go to bed for 20 minutes. I know the alarm's going to go off at 4.30. Get up. There's plenty to do, okay? Um, have a weekly exercise routine. If you're healthy enough to have a weekly exercise routine, do it. Um, in terms of keeping your weight down and keeping uh, the, the body moving, there's a group of people I watch. I haven't watched them for a couple of years. I wonder if they're still there. There's an Oriole Park, not too far from the house, maybe a mile and a half walk from my house. Older Asian gentlemen, and these people have to be, they're older than me, so that's what I'm saying older. They're easy in their 70s, maybe 80s, and doing they do Tai Chi in the park. And they're out there every time I walk by, if I walk by at a certain time every day. And amazing how fluid these older people are. I mean, these people, again, I'm talking at least, you know, 10 to 15 years older than me, and they're very flexible. But they probably never stop moving. So anyway, have a weekly exercise routine, whatever works for you. You know, a lot of people talk about, well, I can't do this. I can't do that. That's fine. Do what it works for you. Do what you're able to do. Um, write a letter to your future self. There is a Google it. There is a website uh, where you can send yourself a message. You put the message in an email and it, it, that the, the company, the, the website emails it back to you. I'm sure there's a bunch of places that do that, but it's a cool thing because think about it. If you're trying to do something new and you're working on some personal growth, some objectives, some self-improvement, whatever it may be, send yourself a message a month in advance, or, you know, a month in the future. And it's really cool to get an email from yourself a month, six months, a year in the future. It's yourself checking up on yourself. I think it's a cool idea. Anyway, write a letter to your uh, future self. Get out of your comfort zone. They talked about that in the last article or the first article. If you're not getting out of your comfort zone, if you're not pushing the envelope a little bit, well, are you growing or staying the same? Again, this is personal growth. I'm not saying that a regular exercise routine that you do the same thing every day is bad. But if you want to, as an example, but if you really want to grow, I know people that have learned languages, you know, at my age, which I'm like, dang, and there's Rosetta Stone. There's a bunch of things. Again, there's, there are classes you can take, but you need someone to reinforce it with as well. You need someone to practice with. So I'm just saying, either way, get out of your comfort zone. If you're not comfortable getting out of your comfort zone, you're never going to change. Grow. Um, you know, learn new skills. Simple as that. Um, and put someone up to a challenge. You know, competition sometimes is one of the best ways to grow. A lot of times people have a contest of the, what is it called, the biggest loser. Uh, I know I know a few companies have done that as well. Uh, we had a thing a couple of years ago at work uh, before COVID where you could compete with your peers in terms of steps and you earn points and cash. I think at the end of the year, if you hit certain goals, you got like $500 towards your medical paid for. So your deductions were $500 less annually, which is kind of cool. I'll take 500 bucks anytime. The point is it was fun because the people were on teams and then your steps counted. And so you could see through the day if you logged in because it was like interactive, you're iWatch or Fitbit, whatever you had, actually tied to the system. You can see Team A was at you know two hundred ten thousand. Team B was at one hundred eighty thousand. It was fun 
um, competition. Uh, one guy in particular, though, I know, he would leave at like lunchtime and walk to Starbucks, which is like two miles away. And he was a big guy, so he took a long time. He was taking like an hour every day. And at some point, they said, you know what? We'd love to have you get exercise, but you're missing a lot of work. The guy was so into walking, he missed a couple hours every day between, like, say, nine to five. And um, anyway, so you know, too much of a good thing is uh, too much. Anyway, what else? Uh, put some up to the challenge. Identify your blind spots. You know, a lot of times you're not capable of seeing what you don't see. Or you're not capable of critiquing yourself because, well, I'm good. I know what I'm doing. I'm great. Well, again, identify your blind spots. Identify some of your weaknesses. Identify some things that need improvement. Simple as that. Uh, ask for feedback and get honest feedback. You know, you need someone in your network, someone you can trust that says, yeah, you're doing good. No, you're not doing good. That was good. That sounded horrible. You know, how many years have you been playing the piano? Uh, because it didn't sound like you, you know, you've been doing it for a while. You want feedback, but honest feedback. And same thing at work, okay? If something's going on in a meeting, let's say you have a presentation. It's an hour presentation and it's over. If people that attended that you can trust and give honest feedback from, well, guess what? Priceless. All right. Uh, stay focused with some to-do lists. Again, we're talking about uh, 42 Practical Ways to Start Working on Self-Improvement, lifehack.org uh, by Celestine Chow. Nothing wrong with a checklist. Nothing wrong with a to-do list. Nothing wrong with, all right, I put a spreadsheet together and here's what I want to achieve on this day by this time, etc. You'll stay focused. You can see progress. Almost like years ago, remember they would do those um, like uh, thermometers where you could uh, fundraise. And the goal was like $1,000, let's say, and you can see $100, $200, $500. Visually, if you can see your progress, if it's something like that, if it's playing the guitar, you probably can't visually. Maybe you can hear it if you think it sounds good. But stay focused with some kind of uh, checklist. Stay focused with some kind of to-do list, all right? They talk about set big, hairy, audacious goals, which is B-H-A-G-S. Big, hairy, audacious goals. And by that, they mean if you really set yourself up for, um, you know, some really um, huge, bigger-than-life goals, aim high, and hopefully you get close. Aim low, it's just too easy. Uh, acknowledge your flaws. Kind of like uh, we talked about before, um, I have some shortcomings. There's some things I'm not going to do well at, some things I will do well at. But again, personal growth says I'm going to push past those things and get better at it. Uh, quit a bad habit. If you got a bad habit, yeah, uh, it's definitely probably not a bad idea to uh, quit it, uh, uh, try to quit it. If you don't, you might find yourself that that bad habit's going to um, really inhibit or prohibit you from doing something uh, productive. Well, folks, this is 98.3 FM, The Life. This is Improv Leadership with your host, Ted Schneider, every Tuesday from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. On, as the man said, 98.3 The Life, the quick station ID. Exactly. And as I mentioned, Improv Leadership with your host, Ted Schneider. We're talking about personal growth tonight, self-improvement. And let's see, let's, uh, where are we at here? We were on an article at lifehack.org. Christine Chow, 42 Practical Ways to Start Working on Self-Improvement. We talked about quit a bad habit. You know what? If you can't quit, maybe try to do less of it. So like if you're trying to quit smoking, instead of two packs, you're down to one pack, whatever. Progress comes in many forms. Progress is um, sometimes, you know, simpler and easier than you think. And it doesn't have to be, as they mentioned, that big, hairy, audacious goals. You do you. Again, I'll talk about this again. I love the book by Sarah Knight called You Do You. Do what works for you. All right. If it comes from goals, it comes to exercise, whatever it, it works for you. If the job, you know, a lot of times when you're a parent, as an example, you want the best for your kids. So they don't become doctors or lawyers or, um, you know, they don't have their own company and making $10 million a day. Fine. Are they happy? Are they leading good lives? Are they, you know, good citizens, good people, good human beings? Are, and again, are they happy? Great. That's all you want, right? A lot of times 
if we set goals that are unrealistic, if we set uh, you know a focus on uh, something that's way, way out of the uh, realm of uh, reality, or it doesn't fit. You know, I know people that have gone into certain careers over the years. They thought, well, you know, my dad was a doctor. I should be a doctor. And they hated it. I know a guy, I don't know how many years it was in med school, came out and um, he worked in an ER for, um, I don't know how many months it was. He hated treating people. He didn't like to work with sick people. I was like, wait a second. You're a doctor. What do you think you're going to do? You're going to treat sick people. Or if you go into, you know, or whatever, you know, setting bones or whatever, surgery. Well, he got out of it. What does he do today? Um, I'm trying to think. He was into a couple of things. Uh, last I saw, he was a um, architect, believe it or not. He went from um, being a doctor. He's an architect. He loves what he does today. But I, I digress. It was just an interesting story because I think a lot of times you do what others think you should do or you have a path you're on because your dad did it or your mom did it. Or it's what people said you were good at. You know how many times people told me I should be in sales? I guess, but, you know, I hated sales. Anyway, long story short, um, acknowledge your flaws, work on what you want to do, and, and stay focused. Uh, get into action. You know, we talk about this all the time, the whole Nike thing. Just do it. You know, a lot of times, um, people wait for the right opportunity. They wait for the right time. Well, I'm not going to do this until the stars align and the full moon and my Guess what? As um, I think his name is Seth Grogan, uh, uh, Grodin always talks about the time is now. The time is right now. Don't wait. All right. The opportunity, if you have an idea, is to do it today. Don't wait until you're 60 or the, you know, the kids are growing up and out of the house or I have a million dollars in the bank. All these things you put out there that are like, Oh, this has to happen, and this has to happen. This it sounds like dominoes are lined up, and they all have to fall in a certain path and method before you can find your 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 goal or your, find yourself. Do it now. Um, avoid negative people. Yes, you know how many people over the years have been negative toward an idea, negative toward a goal, and that's fine. It's my life. It's your life. Again, personal growth. Guess what personal means? It's you. So if there's negative people, people that are sitting there trying to rain on your parade, block your progress, um, you know, just, you know, throw obstacles in your way. If it's a uh, well thought out, okay, I'll listen. You know, that's something to think about. I need to make sure I get out of the way. I, um, you know, whatever it is that I take into consideration in the path I'm taking. But if they're just negative because they are jealous or they envious or they don't like your idea, Great. I get you're not going to be one of my investors, okay? I get uh, you're not on board with my ideas, and that's fine. But this is personal growth for me. So, again, avoid negative people if you can because it does become contagious. And the same thing with learn how to deal with difficult people. Over the years, my gosh, I've dealt with some people, especially at work. And you can be the nicest guy, i.e. me. You can be friendly. You can be professional. And some people just don't want to play nice in the sandbox, okay? That's life. You'll see them on the road. You'll see them in uh, relationships. You'll see them at work. You got to learn how to deal with difficult people, especially if these people are on the path you're walking for this personal growth. Again, this article talks about the Starter Journal. Again, it's um, a lifehack.org by uh, Celestine Chow. Um, 42 practical ways to start working on self-improvement. The journal is kind of cool. I started an online journal 20, let's see, 20 years ago, last month. This is the 20th year. Um, and really, it was a thought I had every every week that I put down on a, on a website, and I've got over a 1,000 articles. And at the same point, it's kind of interesting because I believe our life path is really determined by significant emotional events, as an example. It's one thing that, that defines our path. You can see the path people have taken based on significant emotional events. Birth of a child, death of a spouse, death of a, a parent, um, uh, injury physically, uh, being laid off from your job, a promotion at work, win the lottery, whatever it is, but significant emotional events really um, define the path we've taken, all right? Like a board game. 
Look at it. It's almost like a board game. It's like you look at the board game and think, okay, I'm understanding why uh, people have gone the way they have. Well, it's because this happened and they turned left. They went straight for a while. Then this happened. They went right. So the path they've taken is based on the significant emotional events that have occurred in their life. Anyway, um, again, start a journal, start a blog. Either way, it's about personal development. And you can track how you're feeling, progress you've made, maybe some setbacks, maybe some things you've learned. If you think about life in general, life is about a series of decisions and choices, right? A decision is, well, do I want ice cream? The choice is vanilla, uh, you know, Rocky Road, um, whatever, butterscotch, I mean, whatever the flavor is. But start a blog about your personal development and you can almost start to track things you're doing. And also, it's almost like, to me, it'd be like getting on the scale and seeing you lost weight. This journal will show progress, setbacks, things you've learned. Well, that's that's life in general. A diary, a journal, right? You're learning about yourself. You're learning about this journey. You're learning about what, what you um, are trying to achieve. Uh, reduce the time you spend on messaging apps. I think they're just talking social media in general. If you spend so much time on social media, you're not really learning anything. It might be amusing, um, but you know, how are you personally growing by watching content of somebody else? Maybe get some ideas. Great. Don't copy. You know, don't plagiarize, but uh, you definitely want to reduce the time you spend on uh, apps. Uh, learn chess. I haven't played chess in a long time. And there were some people I played like tennis or like uh, uh, racquetball. They would kick my butt all the time. Learn magic. My younger son, Zach, does that all the time. He's uh, Well, he hasn't done it for a while, I don't think. But years ago, he would do some magic tricks. It was kind of like, oh, that was pretty cool, Zach. Um, so again, there's a host of things you can learn that'll push the envelope, that'll get you out of your comfort zone, uh, be it, like I said, uh, you know, magic tricks or, um, as we talked before, a uh, music instrument, uh, learning the language, learning chess, learn how to play chess. Boom. Stop watching TV. The only time I watch TV is when I'm on a treadmill, usually between 3.7 and 4.1 miles an hour, depending on the time of day, how my knee is healing, how I'm doing. But you know what? If I watch an hour show, no, well, I've got in, uh, like, let's see, usually about four miles. I can do like in an hour. Um, and it's better than sitting down. I burned some calories. I've, I've kept things moving. And I usually, I, I watched a documentary the other day about JFK. I think it was on Prime Video. Um, long story short, it was in, it really interesting. It wasn't just watching TV. Now, I do like watching action adventure and different things as well. But the point is, if you can learn something while you're watching TV, then go for it. Uh, lastly, they talk about meditate. Uh, we talked about that, learn public speaking. There's a host of things. And we're not going to get to all 42 because it's almost time to wrap up. I guess the lessons learned here, personal growth takes some focus. Personal growth takes some time. And if you're interested in getting out of your comfort zone, changing, being a different person, it's not going to happen overnight. Write down your goals, journal your progress, Ask for some help for people that will give you feedback that are really a good source of uh, not only information, but inspiration. And you'll see, no matter what age you are, that it's possible. You'll see that no matter what you've done in life, there's always something new you can do, something interesting you can focus on. And again, I wish you the best on your own personal growth journey. Well, folks, this is Improv Leadership with your host, Ted Schneider, as I mentioned, every Tuesday from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. on 98.3 FM, The Life. Up next is Bob Slipke with Info Explorers. Folks, we will catch you again uh, next week. Again, I appreciate you listening. Take care. Have a great week. It's only Tuesday. So, um, you know, uh, pace yourself, okay? Take care.